to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. David said he rejoiced with the people when they said unto him, come into the house of the Lord. Today is the day of rejoicing because we are privileged to be in God's house. Let us bow our heads as we invite God and welcome him into our presence today. Father God, thank you so much for the Sabbath. Thank you for a day to rest, to worship, and just to be here with you, dear Father. Please safely guide those who are still on their way and help this to be a day of just connecting with you, dear Lord. In your name, amen. Today we may have seen persons that we haven't seen or spoken to all week, yes? And we may see people we haven't seen in a long time. We may also be seeing individuals who we have not seen before. Regardless of when last you've seen each other, or if you don't know the person next to you at all, let us rejoice with our brothers and sisters today and welcome one another. W, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. Philippians 2.29. E, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalms 100 verse 4. L, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. C, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Romans 12, 13. O, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalms 34, verse 3. M, may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Psalms 115, verse 15. E, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Matthew 7, 26. Now, I don't know if you notice, but each verse started with a letter. Anyone knows what those letters spell? Welcome. welcome. Yes, you are paying attention. So again, I want to welcome everyone, visitors, regular members alike, online visitors too, or online worshipers too. So if today you are a visitor, maybe not your first time, but another time, can you just wave your hand? Okay, welcome, brother. Please come again. 
Anybody else? I know I saw some other faces, but I guess we're shy today. But welcome here to City. Please take note as I highlight a few of today's announcements. As we've been mentioning, we do have an abundance of books and magazines here in stock. So if you haven't seen any there in the pews because they've been um, already picked up a previous week, please let someone know because we do have more there. Um, and you can use this to help build up your faith and enhance your witnessing profile. So again, if you don't see any, please let us know so that today you are leaving with um, some books and magazines to share. Tonight's movie night, as a reminder, the short film Rest by Karis George, which premiered in May, will be shown tonight, July 9th, 2022, at the SDA school from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. This faith-based film explores the themes of forgiveness and broken relationships. Payment at the door is $10 for adults, $5 for children, and drinks and snacks will be on sale. Prison ministry meeting. There will be a very important meeting for all St. Thomas St. John prison ministry members on July 30th, 2022 at 4 p.m. at the Shiloh Seven-day Adventist Church. Also, if you're interested in becoming a part of this ministry, um, you may go ahead and attend that meeting because they are interested in new members. As a reminder, Sunday evening Bible study and Wednesday evening prayer meeting continues at 7 p.m. this Sunday and Wednesday evenings on the Zoom platform. Remember to share the link and invite someone to join in in these services. Exciting and empowering insights from the word of God are being received by all who attend. Be sure to be a part of this move of God to build up his church. And again, if you're not a part of the WhatsApp group and not receiving those Zoom links to join, please let pastor know so that you're able to be added to receive that information. Coming from the Seventh-day Adventist School, they have um, some vacancies for the upcoming school year. They are seeking a full-time Bible teacher, a part-time home economics teacher, and part-time school monitors. If you are interested, you may contact the school at 340-775-3525. The family of the late elder Joseph Griffin expresses sincere appreciation to everyone who extended kindness, care, and concern during the illness and passing of this servant of God. We are also very thankful to all who gave donations in his memory to the St. Thomas St. John Seventh-day Adventist School. May God continue to bless us as we look forward to the day when we are reunited with our loved ones who now sleep in Jesus. Until then, let us all be faithful. Um, going back just to highlight some birthdays, we do have a number of members celebrating birthdays, not just this week, but today. So happy birthday, Brother Hanley. Is Brother Hanley here yet? Okay. Happy birthday, Brother Hanley, and also um, Rudel Phillip is also celebrating his birthday today, along with some other members who are celebrating um, birthdays this week. So happy birthday to you, and also in our anniversaries, Sister Clover and her husband Elroy will be celebrating their anniversary in a few days on July 13th, so happy advance anniversary greetings to you, Sister Clover. Finally, I leave you with some hurricane preparedness tips. Um, as a reminder, we are in hurricane season, something we don't look forward to, but we know um, it comes every year. And for the most part, we remember what we need to do, but it's important that we kind of check what we have because sometimes we think we have things together. Um, I know recently with the um, WAPA outages, I thought I had some flashlights there, and when you check, they weren't working. So just a reminder to check your supplies, ensure you have the necessities, enough water, um, first aid, batteries for those flashlights, a uh, small battery-operated radio. If you have pets, you want to ensure that you have um, items for them on hand. Be sure you have an emergency plan. Um, for your family so that in case you get separated or if, God forbid, your home is to be 
um, compromise, everyone knows what to do, where to go, that sort of thing. Um, something I thought was important was to set up an out-of-town contact. Um, some of us didn't realize how significant this was until after the last storm when we were okay, but many of the cell towers and phone lines were down, so family off-island were literally panicking when they saw um, you know, pictures of the damage on the news. So it's important um, to set up a contact that if you are able to get a call out, you know, maybe cousin John in Florida knows that things are okay and maybe he can be the link for the rest of the family so that you're not trying to make contact with 25 people. You make contact with that one person, so that's essential. Also remember to secure important documents um, yes, we know we have birth certificates and ID cards and the like. Are they in a waterproof container? So that's something essential that we need to do. Um, and also remember to follow official instructions. I know sometimes we know best, but sometimes the officials may know of washed out roads or down lines or sparking things that may um, be dangerous. So it's important that we follow official instructions. These tips are in today's bulletin that you may read and become familiar with. Um, remember, if you ever need assistance, we have individuals here from our community services department that may be able to support you in that regard. Again, welcome and have a blessed Sabbath. Hi and welcome to City Seven Day Adventist Church located in the heart of Charlotte Amalia in downtown St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. As we strive to keep our members and visitors safe amidst the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we wish to remind you of important measures that have been enacted to ensure your health and safety and to reduce the spread of this deadly virus. Entry to the building is now on the eastern side through the Huey Multipurpose Building. Upon arrival, you will meet members of our transitional team who will guide you through checking your temperature and sanitizing before entering the building. If you are visiting, you will be asked for your name and contact information in the event that it is needed for contact tracing. A mask that covers both the nose and mouth is required for entry and for the duration of your time in the building. Once inside the sanctuary, you are asked to be mindful of social distancing. Sit here signs have been placed as a guide and our ushers can assist you with seating if needed. If you need to take a mask break during the service or need to exit for any other reason, please use the Western foyer door. During your time outside, feel free to continue worshiping with us using our short range FM radio 90.0 or visit our YouTube channel from the safety and comfort of your vehicle. You will need to sanitize prior to re-entry. As a general reminder, hand washing is required after you've completed using the restroom. Touchless soap and paper towel dispensers have been installed for your safety and convenience. There are also touchless hand sanitizer dispensers located outside the restrooms and strategically around the building. Remember, our goal is the protection and safety of all worshiping with us amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for your time and continued cooperation as we strive to maintain a safe and healthy place of worship. Do enjoy today's service. God bless. Good morning, church. Happy, happy Sabbath. Please stand for our call to worship. Lord, you are welcome in this place.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm here to welcome our regular members worshiping with us in the sanctuary and those worshiping with us virtually. I welcome you with a kiss, <laughs> a smile, and a hug. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord, City Seventh-day Adventist Church. A hearty welcome also is being extended to our visitors worshiping with us. May God continue to bless us, and I pray that, we will be, that when we leave here today, we will be spiritually refreshed, for the Lord is good. He has made us, and we are not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We have come into this place with thanksgiving in our hearts to give God the glory and praise due to his holy name. Let us stand now for the call to worship. heads for prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for opening up our eyes this morning to see another Holy Sabbath day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. You have protected us and our families. You have taken care of us and our loved ones. Father, in spite of your goodness toward us, we have sinned in words, thoughts, and actions. Please forgive us, Father, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we have strayed like lost sheep. We have followed the desires of our own hearts, and we have offended against your holy laws. In your mercy, you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for our redemption, who made their perfect, full sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Father, help us to love each other, Help us to feel each other's care, to build each other up. Father, increase our faith and perfect us in love. And when our life on this earth is over, because we have been faithful to you unto death, give us all a place in your heavenly courts where we will dwell with all the sanctified. Thank you, Father, for hearing and for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
Good morning, church. Today is a very, very, very special Sabbath. We're here at the communion table with God. That is something so special. And it's a privilege that he has afforded us today. So our first song today is Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Full Savior. Come. 
this time we have the deacons come in okay, hymn of praise. okay at the same we have the hymn of praise 183 I will sing of Jesus love hymn 183 I will sing of Jesus love stand please
Jesus love in this prayerless friends my heart shall give me as dear as I that I might live I will sing his love to me nothing good for him I've done how could he such love be so Lord I owe Please be seated. At this time, we will have the deacons coming for the collecting of the offerings. And as we reminded, that we remain seated until this section of the services are complete. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that thou art still upon your throne. We know that the seraphims are still singing, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty. Regardless of the circumstances and the situations here in the small corner of one of your worlds that you have made, we know your will will be done. We know that you will soon come. And we ask, O oh Father, that your spirit will continue to counsel us and prepare us for that soon return. We know, like Job, you can say, did you consider my servants? For we all are your servants to do your will and in helping to spread the gospel to let others know of your goodness and your grace and what you have done for us. Now, O oh Father, as the offering and tithes is collected, that the, those whose hands it touch may use it according to thy Holy Spirit and fulfilling it, that your will will be done. Bless it, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are special. That's right. God made you unique. And he empowers you to prosper, even if you can't see it. His word says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. Some are not convinced by God's words in this verse because they think of how thin their purse is or about what they don't have in the bank account. This may happen because sometimes we fail to realize that God has already placed something valuable in our hands. Hence, we are tempted to doubt God's words in Deuteronomy 8.18 or take comfort by spiritualizing the meaning of the word wealth. Is it possible that we focus too much on the end product, which is wealth, while not appreciating God's raw material, which is the ability to produce wealth? One day a man was asked about the difference between himself and his wife. His answer was, when I am hungry, I behave differently from my wife. After my day of work at the office, I will drop my bag, rush to the kitchen, remove the lid from the pot, and look for my favorite dish. In contrast, when my wife is hungry, she will open the cupboard in the fridge, get out the raw materials, and prepare a delicious meal. Two different strategies address the same need. One desperately seeks only for the end product, and the other uses the available raw materials to produce it. Instead of being frustrated and discouraged about the absence or limitation of the end product, it is more efficient to acknowledge and use God's raw materials. They comprise, among other things, the health, energy, talents, and gifts that He has provided to everyone. And if you think that you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We are promised that we will be empowered as we partner with God by diligently using these raw materials He provides us. 
As we return our tithe and promise, which is our regular and systematic offering, let us praise God for assisting us in transforming the raw materials He provides in the final product intended by Him. May we put our desires last and God first. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Appointment with God. The memory verse is Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. It says, For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The message is the Sabbath is a day to learn more about God's love. Lisa came home from school on Friday. There was that wonderful smell again. Mom was baking bread for Sabbath. Lisa washed her hands and helped her mother finish the Sabbath dinner. Lisa loved Sabbath. This week after church, they were going to have lunch near a duck pond and then take a walk in the woods. Lisa couldn't wait. In today's story, Jesus and his disciples were taking a Sabbath walk too. Let's join them. Jesus loved the Sabbath. He loved to spend time with his friends and talk with them about the love of God. He loved to help people who were sick or sad feel better. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples passed through a field of grain. Jesus and the disciples were hungry. In those days, the people had permission to eat food from another person's farm. If people were hungry and had no food with them, they could eat a few grapes in a vineyard, or they could pick some wheat stalks and eat the little kernels of grain. So as Jesus' disciples walked through the field, they picked some stalks. They rubbed the heads of grain back and forth, back and forth in their hands. When just the little kernels were left, they tossed the kernels into their mouths. The crunchy grain tasted good, but not everyone was happy. Pharisees nearby decided that the disciples were doing something wrong. They said to Jesus, When your disciples picked up the wheat and rubbed it in their hands to get the kernels out, that was like a farmer working. So they are breaking the Sabbath. The Pharisees had taken God's beautiful Sabbath commandment and had made it into their own rule. They made up lots of extra rules that made Sabbath a heavy burden. God wanted Sabbath to be a special day for people to enjoy. He wanted them to learn about His love. But because of these extra rules, many people did not enjoy Sabbath. Jesus loved these Pharisees. He wanted them to know the joy of Sabbath too. Jesus asked them some questions to make them think. Do you remember David? He asked. One time, he and his men were very hungry, so they ate the special temple bread that was really just for the priests. The Pharisees knew about that. If that was okay, then eating grain on Sabbath is okay too, Jesus continued. People should not suffer on Sabbath. The Sabbath is for people. I know, for I am Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, while Jesus was in the synagogue, he saw a man whose hand was crippled. Jesus asked the people, What do you think? Is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Some of the people didn't think the man should be made well because it was Sabbath. Jesus asked them another question to make them think. If one of your sheep fell into a hole, wouldn't you pull it out? A person is so much more valuable than an animal. Therefore, it is right to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus said to the crippled man, Stretch out your hand. The man's hand was completely healed. Jesus wants us to know that Sabbath is a day for joy and healing. 
Sometimes children think that Sabbath is a do not day. Do not do this, do not do that. Actually, Sabbath is a do day. On Sabbath, we have more time to do something special, to do fun things that teach us about God's love. God created the Sabbath so together we can spend time with Him and learn more and more about His wonderful love. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for gracelink.net, created and produced by Falvo Fowler, post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 on to 20. We'll read responsibly. We're inviting the congregation to please stand. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lovely hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein he greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, through it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the formal loss in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, Past the time of your sojourn, here is fair, here in fair. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb 
without blemish and without spot. Together, who verily was foreign before, before the foundation of the world, but, but was manifest in these last times for you. you. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading and doing of his word. Before our pastor comes, El Pastor Cross, with the sermon, Bloodbath, we listen to the Robles sisters as they render a song for us. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Lord, I love you. How I love you. More and more each day. I just want to be close, close to you. Under the shadow of your wings, please hide me, Lord, so that I might be close, close to you. In your presence, there's fullness of joy, of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. No evil can stand where you are. So I just need to be close, close to you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you, how I love you more and more, more and more each day. I just want to be close, close to you, close to you. Under the shadow of your wings, please hide, please hide me, Lord, so that I might be close, close to you, close to you. your presence there's fullness of joy of joy at your right hand our pleasures forevermore in your presence there's fullness of joy of joy at your right hand our pleasures forevermore no
So I just need to be close. I just want, I just want to be close. I just need, I just need to be close, close to you, close to you. To you. Amen. Expressing thanks to the Robles sisters for expressing in music on our behalf. Lord, I love you. In your presence is fullness of joy. I just want to be close to you. And not only do we want to be close to God, we actually need to be close to God. And as a result of our time together here today, it is our prayer that God will indeed draw us close to him. And you know, sometimes, as I have been discovering, we are praying wrongly. We are asking God to do things that he's already committed to doing. When in fact, what we're asking, or needing to ask God, is to help us to be cooperative, submissive to that which he desires to do with and in our lives for his glory and honor. It is indeed a joy and a privilege to be together with the saints of God. Let, let me see the hands of all the saints. J just checking. <laughs> the reason I'm checking for all the time that some people have been in the message of truth, some folks are still under the misconception that you have to, be die, you have to die and be pronounced a saint <laughs> by somebody else. We are saints because we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. So when we have faith in Jesus, when we have submitted and surrendered ourselves to him, we are indeed saints by the grace of God. As we are preparing to participate in the communion service, we want to, and you recognize that we are doing something that we have never done before. So we're going to ask you, starting with those on the balcony with the exception of the media room personnel and the treasury, that you would proceed down the center aisle after the table would have been unveiled and collect the nice little box there wherein you will find the full communion supplies that is the emblems of the broken body, the bread, and the shed blood, that is the wine, grape juice. Then you would move back down the outside aisle. We're going to ask, please, that the deacons would stand in preparation for those persons who might have some mobility challenges that the, you would at, we'd ask you at the appropriate time to raise your hand and the deacons will collect for you those and would bring them to you. Likewise, those in the media room and the treasury, we're asking that the deacons would serve you. Blood bath. Let us pray. Lord God, only you can make 
the seemingly incongruent, understandable to us, so that we can know how to apply these principles to our lives and live by faith, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blood serves its intended purpose best if it remains contained and confined within the body of the being whose blood it is. This is true of the blood of every being except one. And that one being is the divine and unique son of God, Jesus Christ. His blood served its eternally predestined purpose only when it was spilled from his body at the hands of wicked men by the consent of the divine foreknowledge of his father in heaven. That's what we just read in 1 Peter. The purpose was to cleanse all who would willingly plunge beneath that crimson stream. Thus the songwriter captures it well in the first line of hymn 302 in the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. In the blood from the cross, I've been washed from sin. But if you've ever handled blood, whether it was your own, someone else's, or that of an animal, you know, as does anyone who has familiarity with blood, that blood isn't suitable for bathing. Unlike water, blood is not a good solvent. Things do not dissolve in blood like they do in water. Blood is also not a detergent. It does not break down dirt and cause it to be carried away. Yet in the Bible, turn please to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. In the Bible, it is clearly stated that blood cleanses. 1 Peter, or 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. I am reading from the New King James Version where it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? Cleanses us from all sin. Elsewhere in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 5, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, also written by the Apostle John, he indicates to his readers that the communication he is giving them comes, John, or Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, comes from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and did what? Washed us from our sins in his own blood. Further in the book of Revelation, as if perhaps to compound our confusion, in chapter 7, Revelation the 7th chapter, verse 14, explaining to John who those were who were dressed in white robes. One of the 24 elders says, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their blood, their robes, and made them what? White in the blood of the Lamb. Now you know as well as I do, blood does not make things white. 
it stains them red. But as the popular gospel song proclaims, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow. That makes me white as snow. No, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Another songwriter musically prays. O oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in his precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. There are two things we need to take into consideration as we seek to understand this seeming paradox. One is the difference between literal and figurative speech. The other is that, blood, is that the blood being referenced here in these passages is no ordinary blood. It is the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. So we read in Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Again, I read from the New King James Version. All who dwell on earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of the life of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It is this blood which alone can accomplish this marvelous and phenomenal feat. What Peter wrote and what we read for our scripture reading, that angels looked trying to understand this. The very prophets who God used to communicate this message, they were trying to figure out, was it for their time? But God through the Spirit told them that was to be fulfilled in the latter days. And so all the blood of bulls and of goats, of lambs, the bloodbath that had happened through all the centuries previous, culminated in the shedding of the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, on Calvary, so that that could be ended. And the blood alone, which is effective for cleansing of sin, could be shed once and for all. Once and for all time. But at the same time, shed for all who would choose by faith to be covered under the cleansing flood. The problem some people have with figurative speech is that they take it literally. In John chapter 6, verses 48 through 54. That's what happened with the Jews in the city of Capernaum who heard the words of Jesus. Turn to your Bibles, please. John chapter 6, verses 48 through 54. Jesus said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Verse 52 says, the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat?
Do you know that there are people who still are taking figurative language literally? There are people, in fact, there is an entire religious denomination who believes and teaches that when we assemble at the communion table, by the power of the priests in pronouncing this is the body of Christ, that the wafer instantly is transformed into the actual, literal flesh of Jesus. And the wine is transformed into the literal blood of Jesus. It's a doctrine called transubstantiation. But we believe that when we by faith take the unleavened bread and the unfermented grape juice wine, these are representations, representatives, symbols of the broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ. So in verse 53, Jesus continues. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. And because of their misunderstanding and misconception, the Bible says in verse 60, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? 64 verse says, But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should be trained. And he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. And then 66 caps it. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's what happens when we don't understand the truth of what God is teaching. It conflicts with our rational understanding and when we can't understand, what are we going to stop doing? Following Jesus. So Jesus, on the night before his crucifixion, had to make it plain. Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 26. The Bible says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. I find it necessary to pause here just for one point of clarity. There are people who from time to time insist that if that's the way Jesus did it, then unless we do it exactly that way, we are not following Jesus. Would you look again at verse 27? And he took the 
the, not plural, not cups. He took the cup and he says, you drink. Pass it to the next person and you drink. And you pass it to the next person and all of you drink from it. If we were going to be literal about this, we would not have individual cups. But because we understand the principle of what Jesus is sharing, and that by faith we are participating, taking the emblems of his broken body and shed blood, we understand that we follow customs and practices that are consistent with what is acceptable in our times and we are not violating the principles of God. He says, for this is my blood of the New Testament or New Covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't have to go through a witchcraft ritual by taking a literal bloodbath. But by coming in faith to this table, recognizing that Jesus came all the way from glory to Calvary, having lived a perfect sinless life, qualifying him thus to be the Lamb of God without spot. His blood was shed on my behalf. And when by faith I receive these emblems, I literally take a bloodbath and I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ that washes all our sins away. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord God, for the bloodbath that only you can give. May we, as an act of faith, not in the literal emblems, but in Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, participate in this service and receive the cleansing that you so desire us to receive the cleansing that is made possible only by and through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your grace so extended to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to invite, as we transition, that the deaconesses would position themselves for the unveiling off the table. We're going to turn to hymn number 332. 332. Likewise, we're going to invite the deacons to make yourselves present so that at the indication of individuals who would need our assistance, you may be prepared to do that. Let us stand at the singing of hymn number 332, The Cleansing Wave. The praise team will lead us. Oh, now I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing stream I see, I see, I plunge and oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me, it cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. I see. 
see the new creation rise. I am the speaking blood. It speaks for blue dead nature dies. time we're going to bow in prayer our gracious father we are so grateful that we have this blessed privilege of being here to be able to partake in this service we are grateful for the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ through whom we have salvation and the gift of eternal life as we meet here today to partake of the emblems which are symbolic of the body of Christ and of his spilled blood. We pray for your blessing on them. We pray for your blessing on us as we partake that we will at this time recommit and reconsecrate ourselves to you, accepting by faith the sacrifice that was made on our behalf, that we will exchange our filthy garments and in place cover ourselves with your robe of righteousness. Bless us today as we partake. May we humbly, continually submit ourselves to you so that you can work in us to do your will and your good pleasure that we can be transformed vessels fit for your kingdom and fit for your service through the blood of Jesus Christ and by our faith in his power. Bless all who would partake of these emblems, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So once again, starting with those on the balcony, we're going to ask you to come down through the center aisle and having come down, take the box with the communion emblems, exit through the door to my right, and then starting at the back after they would have finished, we ask you to come down through the center aisle and do accordingly. Take on that which is on your side and move out accordingly. Let us turn to hymn number 335, 335, as we are participating in receiving these emblems. What a wonderful Savior. Christ has for sin atonement made. What a wonderful Savior. We are redeemed. The price is paid. What a wonderful Savior. Oh, 
is Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. I praise him. I praise him for the cleansing blood. What a wonderful Savior that reconciled my soul to God. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. Let's keep the flow going, please. Let's keep the flow going. My Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He walks beside me all the way. What a wonderful Savior and keeps me faithful day by day. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He gives me overcoming power. What a wonderful Savior. And triumphed in each trying hour. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. This time we're going to invite that the deacons would come forward and take on behalf of those in the media room and the treasury as well as for yourselves. Please turn in your hymnals, please, to hymn number 412, 412. Look upon Jesus, sinless is he. Father, impute his life unto me. At this time, we're going to invite the praise team, even as we sing, Number 412, look upon Jesus, sinless is he, Father, impute his life unto me. You take the remaining emblems. Why do 
In the 11th chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, starting at verse 23, the Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so you would take, please, the pouch with the bread and open and receive that which the Lord has prepared for us to receive the symbol of the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us partake. Verse 25. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, 
In the same way, after the supper, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us, in faith, receive this emblem of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity in the land of the living where we can come together and celebrate, Lord, your emblems of love. Father, we are thankful for the fact that you are a true example of how Christ-like we are to be. Father, as we partake today, we pray, Lord, that as we go forward, that we'll understand such an emblem of love, dedication, togetherness. Lord, that we may be humble in our approach to others as we witness, as we share the gospel of love. So we thank you for this opportunity and pray, Lord, that it be a blessing to each one who has partaken. And for those who, Lord, look on, may they understand that they too have a part in this emblem we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. We're inviting the deacons to come forward at this time and to receive the offering from us, which is customary. Customary at the communion time. An offering of benevolence that is shared to help others who may not be as fortunate as we are. Let us stand for a closing hymn, 338. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Shall I forever? 
I sing for I cannot be silent His love is the theme of my song Redeem, redeem Redeem by the blood of the Lamb Redeem how I love to proclaim in His silent forever I am Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we deem it a privilege to be part of this group here today. Your loving kindness toward us. When we meditate on your love, how gracious and kind you have been to humanity. The great sacrifice that you have made on behalf that we all could share in the inheritance that you have provided. Dear Lord, we present ourselves to you today asking you to give us divine power. Help us to live lives that would bring honor and glory to you, realizing the great sacrifice that you have made and what you have under gone so that this could be made possible. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Today, Lord, we ask that as we leave this place, that we would live consecrated lives day after day, looking forward to your soon return. Help us moment by moment to realize that it is the goodness of your heart and love that we could be made whole once again. Continue to God, bless us, help us that during the day, remaining days of our lives that we would live to bring honor and glory to your name. Into your hands we commit ourselves as we separate one from another. Give us victory and overcoming power, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Understand. 